What are some cheat codes you've found in the game of life? If any website offers a percentage coupon code like 10% off try higher values like 20% off. They often have them. Yeah I'm going straight for 100% off and working my way down from there. You don't have to always give away the recipe. By that I mean. Don't over explain yourself. If you can't do something. 9 stroke 10 times it's okay to simply say unfortunately I'm not able to do that. Can't swing at this time. Etc. You don't have to go on and on about why, or make up reasons and list them off. Over explaining just ends up looking more suspect than simply being clear and concise. I like this one. I have found myself making up elaborate stories to explain why I couldn't attend an event or something. Just be brief. Honest. And to the point. The correct response to any compliment is thank you. You can then follow it up with a comment if you'd like to continue the conversation. If someone likes your dress, thank you. It has pockets. If someone compliments your art, thank you. I've been practicing. If someone asks if you're a professional singer because you have a good singing voice, thank you. I just sing for fun. Not only does it make you seem confident and self-assured, it tells them that they are right. That's a friendly thing to do. This even works if you don't believe the compliment. Say, oh, no, I'm ugly. When someone compliments your appearance not only tells them that they're wrong, it makes you think of yourself as ugly. A better answer would be, thank you. I really appreciate that and I don't always believe it. So hearing that from you helps. I've started going with thank you. That's nice to hear. I have a heated throw blanket in my living room in the winter. I wrap my coat up in it. Crank up the heat and in a few minutes. My coat is toasty warm so I can brave the coldest day. Also toss your jeans in the dryer for 15 minutes on a cold morning and you will have similarly warm jeans. It's a nice perk if you have guests over too. If you are punctual, smartly dressed, and quite friendly, you can actually get pretty far in most jobs without being that good at anything or trying very hard. Not a cheat code, but an easter egg. If you ask someone if they know all the words to I'm a little teapot around 80% of the people you ask will start singing it. Half of those will do the gestures. Do you know all the words to I'm a little teapot? When I was in my old 500 plus person building, I kept a stack of papers on my desk. When I was bored, or got tired of sitting down, I'd get up, grab my stack of papers and walk around. I called them my walking papers and did this for months. Got a lot of head nods and not one question the entire time. People always assumed I was on an important mission. But nope. Not in the least. My friend is a janitor at a pretty new school. Not much broken stuff, so on his downtime he walks the building rather quickly with whatever tool he decides. The teachers and staff always think he's going to fix something. Lol. Take a $1 bill and flip it over. Now tape a $5 bill and tape it to the end of the upside down single with as little tape as possible to make it secure. Now feed the $5 bill into a change machine. The coin machine reads the 5. Gives you quarters. Then reads the upside down single. Rejects that. And boom. You got yourself a felony. You made me laugh and I haven't laughed in 6 years. If you admit you're wrong and make changes to whatever it is that you're wrong about, people will respect and appreciate you more. Unfortunately this requires the swallow egg pill patch installed. Without this you will be incapable of being a civil person. Not always. I have a policy of being accountable for my role in any miscommunication or conflict. It's amazing how often that is taken as me being at fault rather than as me admitting my contribution to the issue. Dishonest or self-unaware people will frequently exonerate themselves completely the second someone else admits any wrong. Even if they were unequal, or often bigger, contributed to the problem. This goes doubly true in workplaces, where the perception will be that the person who admitted any wrongdoing was the guilty party. Those situations can paradoxically lead to the honest person, the person admitting their role, 
getting a bad reputation. Not advocating against honesty and personal accountability. Just saying it's important to be aware of the risks associated with it because these things will happen and it's less painful if you anticipate it as a possibility. Compliment your children with you are a hard worker and not you're smart. Studies show that kids who think they're hard workers outperform kids who think they're smart. Can confirm. Was told I was smart as a kid. Terrible worker. This is growth vs fixed mindset. For those wishing to investigate further. And it is rock solid legit science. Walk with a purpose. For some reason. People think you're busy and you don't get hassled. To seem charming. All you have to do a lot of the time is to be an engaged listener. You don't need an amazing sense of humor. To be able to lay on the compliments or regale people with stories. Just listen to other people in a way that shows you are interested and not only waiting for your turn to talk make eye contact. Don't interrupt them. Don't turn the conversation to be about you. Ask good questions. Edit, I just want to add. As per many comments here. That being engaged listener is not the same as being a sort of conversational doormat where you have to allow people to drone on and on about things that don't interest you. Annoy you. Offend you. Or drain you. Merely suffering through an encounter is pretty much the opposite of what I am talking about. It's about letting yourself be interested in. And learn from. Other people are not focused so much on feeling like you have to be an entertainer. And being an engaged listener is really the opposite of the person who just listens and never wants to talk about themselves. You are putting yourself into the conversation with your interested responses. You are guiding it to places you find interesting. Just suffering through boring conversations is not engaged listening. You become the people you surround yourself with. Guess I'm a nobody. This is the biggest one for me. I've seen too many smart kids go down the wrong path just because they hung out with idiots. Inversely. I've seen idiots become pretty successful just because they hung around encouraging. Smart kids. When someone says something true. Say you're right. Not I know. It'll make them feel better and you've still shown everyone how awfully clever you are. I love you. You're right. I had a professor in college who while lecturing. Suddenly let out a huge fart. Without pausing. He turned his head as if talking to someone behind him. Said Jess and Heat. And continued lecturing as if nothing had happened. It immediately diffused any potential awkwardness and embarrassment. And I vowed to use the same strategy if the same thing ever happened to me in front of a large crowd of people. My fav line for this is did you hear that a whole talking sh behind my back? First time I heard it I was in tears. Ask questions. About everything. Ask people about themselves. Be open about stuff you don't understand. And ask questions about that. When you forget someone's name. Own up to it and just ask them. I am amazed at how many people won't acknowledge even a tiny amount of ignorance. Or won't show honest curiosity about something can't admit they've forgotten something they feel is important. And won't ever ask for help. Guys your life becomes so much easier if you just drop the f-ing ego and ask. The best advice I ever received was from my grandmother. I was a talkative child and would ask questions non-stop. When I apologized for asking so many one day she looked me straight in the eye and said never stop asking questions. When married don't stop treating your significant other like you did when you were trying to win them over. It is a great way to show them you're still as infatuated with them as you were when you first met. Date your wife. Or someone else will. If you're genuinely pleasant to be around and you show up when it counts. People will let you get away with a lot of slacking off. Corollary. If you can always be counted on to come through and you show up when it counts. People will dump their work off on you because you're a sucker. You can borrow almost all of your textbooks from the library as a college student because of modern book rental agreements most colleges have. WorldCat allows you to be linked to almost any library in America. And all you have to do is find your book in the system and fill out a request form at a library and it should be there in a week. I've saved probably $2000 doing this in my first two years of college. 
All of my courses now require an online code to do the mandatory homework assignments. Which you can only try by buying a textbook full price. Or you can buy just the code for $20 less. So only $130 instead. How generous. Under promise and overperform. Say you'll achieve less than you think you will and then do more and everyone will be impressed. Works well at a job. I always tell my girlfriend to be ready for 2 minutes of terrible s. Oftentimes I make it up to 4 minutes of just bad s. On a kind of similar note. My life motto is minimum input. Maximum output. It sounds pretty bad at first but it's actually very functional. No one stops a guy or girl carrying a pizza. It can get you backstage to concerts. As an adult you can tell almost any kid who is running to stop running and they will. Man. You know way better kids than I do. I'm calling BS on this one. Source, was lifeguard for 5 years. Walk please. Gets almost no play. Stop running. Catches their attention only about half the time. Run faster will almost always make them stop and look at you quizzically. As they are not used to adults encouraging horseplay. Once you've got their attention through this method, you can tell them to walk. If you have no complaints about your food service staff at a restaurant, ask to see the manager and pay a compliment and a thank you about the server host staff. Usually people want to see a manager to complain. And a compliment is nearly always welcome. I've gotten countless free drinks of petizers chips off my bill all for just making a polite comment to management. You probably caused many heart attacks until they realized you wanted the manager for good reasons. Get a credit card like Amex Blue that has 3-6% cash back at groceries. Buy all your items at grocery store. I'll use Kroger as an example. You can buy normal groceries gift cards. Amazon. Delta. H&M. McDonald's. Whatever, and get the cash back on that deal. Then. If you time it with their 4x fuel rewards, you can save $1 gallon off gas up to 35 gallons. Altogether, the math works out to being 12-15% off pretty much everything I like. Been doing this for years. I'll plan large purchases from Amazon or Home Depot around their 4x fuel points so I can get the gift cards. Edit, this also includes Kroger stores that operate under a different name, that is, King Supers. I am an assistant teacher in a preschool. Asking if kids can use their sitting muscles and listening muscles during circle time makes the kids want to show me how strong they are. All good and well until some kid flexes their sitting muscles too hard and suddenly you've got a poopy pants emergency. Just be nice. Particularly to people in the service industry. Your job. Your personal interactions. Even your calls into customer service will go 100% easier if you're just nice to people and recognize that they are probably just trying to do their job. Not screw you over. Be very nice. And if you're trying to get a refund or something wasn't to your liking, always go for the disappointed routine and not the angry routine. At least in my own personal experience. Businesses are much more responsive to this. I cannot overstate how much dressing well and being well groomed will impact your life. It'll drop the difficulty by two or three levels. No joke. People will treat you vastly differently. The opposite is also true. I did this but took it a step further. Got my hideously misaligned teeth fixed. Got braces as an adult. Highly recommended if you never had it sorted as a kid. And holy sh did the money spent pay for itself in no time. Think about it. The less resistance there is to a person wanting to make eye contact with you. The longer and more in-depth your engagement will be with those people, and the more confident you are in turn. This can lead to better jobs, promotions, etc. Best comment of the day, if you're in an argument with someone, instead finding clever comebacks, and yelling and screaming at the other person, stay as clam as possible, let the other person do the yelling. After when they are done stay quiet for a few seconds. Let the silence linger, and just silently stare at them. 90% of the time they'll start getting fidgety and uncomfortable. 
then convey your point calmly and precisely without blabbering too much. You'll easily get the upper hand at any argument.